giving a thousand dollars in the giveaway today but more importantly we're talking seven day series free training that I'm doing on how to be a black belt in sales and closing deals now we're gonna start out this thousand uh, dollar giveaway with a simple question for you hundred bucks to the first person I see that answers this correctly there's a book that I like called the self-made billionaire effect it's by I think a couple CPAs accountants and they said that they did the research on the wealthiest people in the world and 60 to 70 percent of them all started in one thing what is that thing for a hundred dollars this is like survey says jeopardy or what wait, wait survey says is uh the price is right who has the correct answer somebody said it's lagging now there i see it all right the first person i see on Instagram, it's Sly Bro, or uh, it's Sly T Bro, I T S L Y T Bro. Uh, <clears throat> I screenshotted it there. 100 bucks. So the answer is 60, according to research done in this book that I like, Self Made Billionaire Effect, they studied the wealthiest self made people, not the people who inherited money. 60 to 70 percent of them started in sales so if you want to know why you should pay attention to today's training as well as you know the seven day training i'm doing it's simple you learn this stuff is the most correlated whether it's fully causative is another question it's correlated the most uh, of any activity that you can engage in for wealth creation how are we on our sound are we good everything Let's just. If it keeps pausing, just put it on LTE. It's the only thing we can do. Instagram seems to be working for me. Okay. Super lag. Oh, you might want to put it on LTE. Go. I'm watching it here. So let's just think about it this way. Think of all the things growing up people tell you you need in order to be financially independent. They tell you things like, you know, a degree. Some people are going to tell you. On a, on a little bar graph, like a degree is the most important thing. Other people are gonna tell you your daily routine is the most important thing. Other people are gonna say it's your networking skills. Other people are gonna say it's your daily habits. There's a lot of things, people. Other people are gonna say, it's how hard you work. Working hard, right? Hard work. But if you notice, these aren't really backed up. Now, <clears throat> just to be clear, it is true that all of these are important things. I'm not so sure about college degree, but your daily routine, your ability to network, habits, ability to turn on and off hard work, those are important, but nothing is close to what we're talking about right here. Okay, it, somebody said right here, hard work. Um, yeah, it's just the science doesn't back that up. Like the actual evidence doesn't back this up. Somebody said, Ty, can you explain Jordan Belford sell me this pen? So Jordan Belford, Wolf of Wall Street, that's in that movie where he's like, sell me this pen. So I've got, I've become friends with, with him over the last couple years. And I've asked him, you know, this kind of thing, this pen question. I'll, I'll tell you, everybody has their different take on what is important. <clears throat> but I'm gonna tell you this right now. Rockefeller, right? Rockefeller was the richest man in history so far. Rockefeller, right? He was worth in today's dollars 600 billion in, if you adjusted for inflation. <clears throat> now, if you actually read about him, one of the things that he did was master sales. He would, get, he would be in a small room Here's him. There'd be three or four people sitting around, you know, and he had the ability, this guy only has one leg. <laughs> they had the ability to 
negotiate that deal in a way that everybody was happy. And of course, Rockefeller ended up making $600 billion as a product of all of those negotiations he did. Someone said, the hell is that handwriting, brah? But one thing that wealth creation is not correlated with, good handwriting. So I try to focus on the things that are important. Okay. $100 for today's game show. Live, streaming, Facebook, YouTube. The question is, what year was Rockefeller born? Just so you know, you got to know a little history so you know the time frame. I'm going to look it up to make sure I know. I think I know that. And I'm talking about Rockefeller Sr. Okay? There's a few Rockefellers. I'm talking about John D. John D, baby. What year was he born? Let's go. Who knows? What year was he born? $100. How come people don't just Google it? People are giving wrong answers. I guess they don't have, I guess they're using their phone for this. I'm going to look around. Whoever I see when I turn back around on Insta, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. We need something. What's Zach? What can we say instead of survey says? We need something that's unique to us. Live stream says? Say, uh, that about live stream says, man? That's like a modern world one. Why do the door open? Is that just for air? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I'm fine. And the live stream says for $100. Boom. I'm looking right here. <clears throat> Twitter. Nush underscore F. 1839. Nush underscore F. Damn, YouTube goes crazy. YouTube's like a hyperactive thing. Woo! Don't worry if you didn't win. 100 bucks. All right, let's just do it this way. For the second $100, pay, teach you a little financial history they didn't teach you in school. What year did Rockefeller die? So you know the general time. You know, he went through the Depression towards the end of his life. What year did he die? Let's go. Here we go. D, no, that's when he was born. <clears throat> Blessed underscore baller on YouTube, 1937, right here. You see Blessed underscore B-L-L-R-R, -R, 1937. So this man lived, he was in his, I'm Blessed baller on YouTube. You gotta give your email, your cash app or your PayPal or else we can't get you the money. YouTube direct messaging is crap. I don't know why, why hasn't YouTube just come up with direct messaging? How hard of a feature, it's like Snapchat was just copied by Instagram. <clears throat> How a rocket science could it be for Google to add direct, maybe they don't wanna have direct messaging. I feel like it would help. Survey live stream says, 1937. Okay, by the way, just let me throw this out to you. Right now, See, I've been in the game. People don't realize that I've been moving in silence for a long time. People see me on social media. They're like, who's this new entrepreneur? I started when I was still a teenager with my first business. And uh, so I started in 2001, 2002 online. So I've been in the online game almost as long as anybody. Not as long as Jeff Bezos, obviously. He started in 84, uh, 94. But <clears throat> I've been in it for a while. And uh, I've never seen a time like we're in right now. Like, man, if you could be 18 right now, who here is 18 right now? Because the opportunities, every tool that you need exists that Rockefeller didn't have. Now, Rockefeller did have some things. He lived through some great opportunities. There was a recession in the U.S. in the late 1890s. He made a lot of money in that time. <clears throat> a lot of people born in the 1840s to 50s made a lot of money because specifically it was a great time to be born when you were in your prime. Uh, a lot of people born in the late 40s, early 50s made a lot of money. People like Bill Gates. Um, you see this whole generation, Steve Jobs and stuff, because they came around right when a big era began, which is the personal computing era. Right now, we live, I mean, there's, I was at the, I don't know if you saw my Snapchat, but talking about sales, I'm at this conference today, Traffic and Conversion, and there's thousands and tens of thousands of people here. And people come up to me and 
they're like, what's the best thing I can do? There was all these people who have been in my agencies. One guy been in my social media marketing agency since 2016, making $25,000 a month right now. Gross, probably netting, I don't know, ask him, I'd guess 10 or 12,000. Um, it's a pretty high profit margin business. Anyway, I'm going, you guys got everything. You don't have to commit to expensive office, you got WeWork. It doesn't cost you 150,000 to build a website like it cost Jeff Bezos in 94. You got ClickFunnels, you got Shopify, you have WordPress, you have Wix. I mean, there's like a million quick. You can build a website. You have Amazon store, you can sell on Amazon. Jeff Bezos charge you what, like 30 bucks a month? So you have all that. Marketing, <clears throat> you don't have to drop millions on TV ads anymore. You can start with a $5 budget on Facebook ads, another tool. So you guys, here's the thing, you right here, in terms of the timing of your life, you have, like I said, WeWork is a powerful tool because you don't have to commit to long-term contracts if you need an office. You can have a one-person office. There's a couple companies like WeWork, but we use WeWork. Um, secondly, and, and there's Regents or some other ones like that. Um, you then have like Shopify. You also have Amazon that you can sell on. You have affiliate programs like ClickBank so that you could just get paid if you could send some clicks over to people's offers here. You have, <clears throat> for hiring, you have Upwork. Um, for get, collecting credit cards, it used to be hard. Remember back in 2006, seven, you had to get merchant accounts of banks, this, or use PayPal and they would cut you off. Now you have like Stripe. And there's a few others, Braintree, Stripe, all these uh, simple plugins like that. What else? Customer support. Like I said, you got Upwork. You have. It's very easy to do virtual assistants now. I mean, virtual assistant. I got my first virtual assistant probably like 2005 or something. But it's all here now. What I'm trying to tell you though is the money that you're trying to make from all these things. You have to find the common hub for all these spokes and that is sales and persuasion you see with all you can have shopify oh i forgot social media i forgot facebook ads every tool that you need is right now we are at a convergence moment we're at a convergence mo moment very similar to um what we had or what Rockefeller had between 1839 and 37, right? So my question to you, my question to you is, do you have, first of all, these spokes, somebody wrote Pornhub. Everybody's saying that. <laughs> what? There's a bunch of people saying it. That's because once one person says it, then people are like, ooh, <laughs> let me, let me. Um, but that right there is the, is the hidden key. And that, my friend, has not changed since Rockefeller's days. The same skills Rockefeller had, that's not gonna ever change. That's not gonna ever change, okay? Somebody just wrote 1839. That competition's over, my friend. You'll be quick to the game. Ty, no one can read what you're writing. That's why I also say it. Um, if you expect to get rich without paying money, then you won't get rich. It takes money to make money, they say, right? Was born 1126. He was a Sagittarius? Ty, I'm with the Amazon Affiliate Pro Associate Program of Domain and a site. Which program do you recommend? Ha! I just closed my Amazon group. A lot of you missed it. <clears throat> so, I got that closed right now. Ty, what's your opinion on drop shipping? Yes, one, that's another tool in the arsenal. You know, you've got Alipay, Alibaba. If you live in Asia, you got all, this whole family of companies here, especially in Asia, but they also allow you to send things to the United States without holding the inventory here. Ty has doctor handwriting. But instead of the medical field, he's in business. Ty, should we watch a persuasion program? Uh, as a program I've had, it's a pretty ex expensive program. Um, but I'm all, that's what I said, I've launched a seven day test group. I'm gonna put the link below. Um, for the next seven days, I'm gonna take a handful of people 
I'm gonna close it after seven days. Like in the past I've done seven day closes, but in the seven days we just, it's like a partial scholarship. This one's actually gonna close. So if you wanna get in this, I'll put a little link below. What is the link? Tylopez.com. Sales live. You can go right there. For seven, you got seven days left. I'm putting this official notice. I'm gonna do my, a black belt system. I'm gonna take a handful of you, turn you into sales and closing and persuasion black belts with a special test group. I've never done this before, by the way. Um, so <clears throat> this is gonna hold you together. I just want you to know, if you get in my social media marketing program, if you get on Amazon, if you are on Shopify, if you're at WeWork, Virtual Assistant, Stripe, Upwork, if you're an affiliate, but you don't have a black belt in sales, it just, the game doesn't work right. What Rockefeller would do, he was so quick with his sales and negotiation, he could change the structure of the deal in a way that instantly he knew he was getting a good deal and they still felt like they were getting a good deal. That is hard. Let, let's talk about that for a second. So let's break down sales. There's really, and for those of you who get in the, we're doing a four month certification. At the end, for those of you who get in the, the small paid test group, it's gonna be small because I'm only doing it for seven days. I don't even know if I'll do it again for this whole year, but I'm gonna close it. This is the first time I've ever opened this. This is, I'm gonna train you the same things I train my salespeople who work for me. I've been training salespeople in my own company since 2003 or four. First person I started training was a guy named Justin Stainback. He was actually one of my mentors, nephews. Um, and he went on, he's an entrepreneur now to these days. We still talk, he lives in North Carolina. So that was kind of the first person I remember I told him, we were closing big deals back then, big financial deals. We worked with GE Financial, GE back then was the biggest company in the world, GE Capital, and I told him, Justin, you gotta close a deal this way. And he wouldn't listen to me. He wouldn't listen to me. I started being trained in sales from Joel Salatin, my first mentor, when I was 19 years old. So I've been in sales for a long time, man, and I will tell you, there's levels to this game. Most people are white belts. Most people coming out of college are white belts. Most people definitely coming out of high school. I'm assuming your parents never told you. I've never met a parent who's like, yeah, I taught my kids how to close deals. No. Clayton James 671 says on Twitter, Ty, any real estate advice? Yeah, learn how to sell. All real estate is, is closing deals and negotiation and persuasion and sales. That's it. Uh, I had <clears throat> the other day, um, I just closed a real estate deal. I don't know if you saw, I posted on Snapchat. I put the little, I posted like the, what's called the HUD, the closing statement, right? From the US government. And anyway, I was closing out. It was, it was a small deal, $750,000, 111 acres of real estate that's in the path of development. And when I was talking to people, the people selling it, they wanted a higher price. And the realtor, I told them, we can get this price better. I mean, we can get this thing for a better price. And the realtor was like, no, no, we're gonna scare them off and all this. I said, listen to me, listen to me. The way that you do this thing is we're gonna come in with this offer. We came in with the offer. Sure enough, I got that thing for way cheaper. And I got it for what the real estate agent was like, it's impossible, you're just gonna piss them off. I said, there's a way to have a conversation with people, persuade them over to your side without pissing them off. He didn't believe me and you know, he was wrong. And now he, now he understands that the way, there's ways of doing this thing that you win at. Um, <clears throat> Ty, I'm studying Than Merrill's great book, The Real Estate Wholesaling Bible. Dan Merrill's a great sales guy. He launched a big real estate education company. He's done a lot of sales. Uh, one, of, one of the people who I want to be the only person selling, I mean, teaching in the sales program on how, how to sell, um, Cole Hatter will be uh, teaching some of the program over the four months. He's closed $100 million from the stage, right? I've closed, I do stuff from live streams, internet, social media, but I also do one-on-one -on -one sales and started with cold calling and door-to-door. -door. So we'll be talking, there's basically four phases that you've got to understand of sales, and they're very simple. 
how to open deals. There's an art to opening a deal. Obviously how to close deals, right? I mean, this is a no brainer. But third is how to read people, man. Reading people. This is so big. Like right there, like right, that is the crux of how, you know, sell me this pen. They, there is no one answer to sell somebody a pen. If you can read people, you are the king. And that's what Rockefeller was the king of, reading people. And then the fourth thing that you need to understand is what I call the ninja. There's a set of ninja techniques that you can't just encompass in one thing. And these are anywhere from, you know, de-escalating negative situations. How do you de-escalate? when somebody's freaking out or angry, that's an interesting thing. The 25 cognitive biases, which I've expanded into 34 cognitive biases. Scientists say there's 24 biases. I've been studying them for about seven years and I've expanded. I think they're missing about nine. So I think there's 24. Those are all ninja things. These are the three foundational and then we go super deep with like extra, extra stuff. So this can be like the difference between um, doing low ticket and high ticket, selling from the stage versus selling one-on-one -on -one versus selling on the phone versus selling on social media, live streams versus selling via email, uh, selling, <clears throat> did I say door to door? That's a, selling hard things like life insurance like, or car sales. There's ninja techniques that apply to each one of these. Josiah Neal said, I want this course. I'll tell you this, just like my Amazon course, which people thought I was joking when I said I'm gonna close it, it's closed. People were like writing in, like begging, like, yo, I wanna get in. And I'm not, we're not even, even if people come to me with money, we're just turning them away. Cause I told everybody, get in or I'm closing this. And so this is the same thing. Ty, can you get girls with this technique? So can a person use this in their dating life? I mean, sure, all of life. In fact, I'm gonna tell you this, you can use this for health. If you're out of shape, you have to sell yourself. You have to open a deal, which is like open your mind to going, all right, I need to be working out. A lot of people do that, but they don't close the deal because they don't know how to read themselves and they don't have ninja techniques. These four things apply to everything. A lot of people are lonely out there in the world. A lot of people can't get a girl or a guy or a lot of people can't find, they're lonely. I live in New York City. I live in the biggest cities in the world. New York City, Miami, London, Los Angeles. Same thing. You see people that are, bo that are bored with life, that are depressed because they don't know that you even have to sell yourself to yourself. I'm not even talking about selling yourself to other people, man. Um, quid pro quo, somebody wrote. Uh, Ty, when is Berkshire Hathaway meeting? I believe it's the fourth, isn't it? Okay. Hey, Rick, come here for one second. Mm -hmm. Chris Lucia said people can't get a girl because they are weak inside. This one, tell, tell Frank of them. Okay. Uh, I don't know that people can't get a girl necessarily because they're weak. Hey, that, don't oversimplify stuff. I would say people be, can't do it because they were never trained. How about that? You gotta be trained. How's the book sell or be sold? There's lots of books out there. I'm gonna teach you, look, I'm gonna teach you online sales. I'm gonna teach you offline sales. I'm gonna teach you phone sales. Teach you s selling from the stage. Like I said, Cole Hatter is gonna teach a module on selling from the stage. He sold 100 million in the last few years from the stage. 100 mil plus. I think it's even more than that now. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, is this course a great addition for SMMA? All of you in the agency programs, you should consider getting in this test group because the number one issue people or concern people have is go, if I start an agency, will I be able to get clients? I'm like, yeah. MLM, if you're in a multi-level marketing program, if you're in a network, I know a lot of people who are network marketing follow me. You definitely wanna do this. Look, network marketing can work really well or really horribly. I never really did network marketing. I think I tried it once for a week back in like 2004 when I lived in North Carolina. 
And then I went, I was doing other stuff, so I just didn't have time for it. But those of you who are in network marketing, network marketing is only sales skills. Those of you who have a nine to five job, you wanna get a raise, you wanna get a promotion, that's sales. So, Ty, this sounds like a good course. I think it will be, and it's something people, I'm only doing this course because I did a Twitter poll, and people were like, this is the one that I want people to, I mean, people said, Ty, this is the one I want you to do. It won the Twitter poll. Ty, what's your opinion on Amway and network marketing? I just told you, I mean, you can make money in network marketing if you know sales. If not, you're wasting your time, basically. Ty, you have any plans to come to Mexico? D3 fan page. Ty, I bought SMMA 2.0 and love it. Sweet. Ty, when are you coming to Stockholm, Sweden? I'm in all three of your programs. Doing very well. Fernando. You know, it's funny you say that. I'm opening offices slowly but surely in 33 countries. We're targeted 33. Um, we're not in all 33 yet. Right now, we're in only one, two. We're in the U.S., multiple places. Canada. London, the UK, uh, China, Pakistan, India, Philippines. I'm missing a few, but we're open. We're going to 33 countries. By the way, we're hiring, but only for a select group of people. So I have a link on my website if you want to. I do it. We have a hiring quiz that will basically see if you got what it takes to come work for us. Ty, did anyone buy the credit program? Absolutely. Absolutely. We got people in all my programs. I have 280,000 people in my paid programs. Some people at one point thought it was a scam. Maybe on my first couple thousand people were like, this isn't going to work on people. But we, I've now been doing this. I think I launched my first online course in either 2013, for sure in 2014. But I had one before 20, the 67 Steps. So we're going on six, seven years here, and you know, 100 million plus have watched the free training like this, but a quarter of a million have gone through the paid stuff. Maybe a little more, but yeah. How long will the sales deal be up? Seven days. If you click the link that we put or the link below, you'll see all the, go. you should go check out that page. Bookmark that page. Where can we take the quiz to work for you? It's on, I think, is it on tylopez.com, Rick? The jobs, the hiring quiz. It's just in the footer. Careers is in the footer. Yeah, if you go to tylopez.com and scroll to the very bottom in the footer, it said careers. Okay. Open one in Africa. One day I'm open one in Africa. We're going slowly but surely. We're moving around all the continents. Oh, Australia we're going to. South America. Do a day in the life vid, Ty. I've done some of those um, day in the life. Okay, let's give out 100 bucks. Here. Let's do $100. Ty, I wonder if you'll read this. Ty, when are you posting the rest of the lessons in Amazon Blueprint? Oh, don't worry, they're coming. They're coming, we've got like seven new teachers flying in if you're in the, same with the e-com program. We got people coming. Isn't there someone just recorded today or tomorrow for the e-com, right? Uh, uh, tomorrow, Amazon Blueprint. Tomorrow, Amazon. Sorry, um, yeah. yeah, we got tons of teachers coming in. Ty, do you like white women? <laughs> These questions are great. Uh, Ty, when are you coming to Trinidad and Tobago? Ty, I'm in your 12 Foundations program. Ty, will this be helpful to sell life insurance? Believe it or not, I started, well, it wasn't my first business. My first business was a food business. Second business was life insurance. Actually, second was health insurance. Third was life insurance. Life insurance, if you could sell life insurance, you could sell anything. I think people go, oh, Ty, you're really good at selling stuff. And I go, that's because I, I started with the hardest thing. It's kind of like this. If you set someone down, they never worked out, and you go start with 500 pound bench press, and if you could survive that, you're gonna be, you're gonna be strong in the gym for the rest of your life. I didn't even know life insurance was hard because I had never sold anything. I was like naive, I was like da, da da Someone goes, here Ty, here's what I want you to sell. I want you to call people who don't know you. I want you to say to them, hey, do you wanna spend money so that when you die, someone else gets a benefit? 
You get nothing while you're alive. Nothing alive. But when you die, a whole bunch of other people get better. Do you want to give your money to that right now? And I, I just was like, oh yeah, okay, I'll do that. And I did that and uh, sold a lot of life insurance. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of life insurance. Uh, face value, they call it. And, and um, so yeah. Ty, best book you've read? Best book I've read ever. Probably Civilization as Discontents by Sigmund Freud. Ty, I bought your SMMA program. I'm only 20 years old. I'm making $10,000 a month. I just quit my job a few days ago, DJ Gordon. I hear that a lot, man. It's crazy. Today, if you go on my Snapchat, just all these people come up to me at this conference going, dude, you changed my life, making 25,000. I tell them, I didn't really change your life. You changed your life. But I'm glad I was maybe a catalyst or something. Ty, I see you shining, brother. Ty, Chad Jacob, Hernan says, I love you, Ty. Alexander Weeds says, yikes. Stax Washington said, Ty, I joined your Amazon program. I was super eager. Can't wait to change my tax bracket. <laughs> Nicholas said, Ty, I have a short attention span. Can I sell with a short attention span? Um, I mean, how short are we talking here? Are we talking goldfish short? Goldfish has a six second attention span. He's not listening anymore. He fell asleep. His comments, it's offline. He asked the question, are you like, it's kind of like narcolepsy, but um, say uh, attention epilepsy. Greetings from Norway, Mats Revler said. Hello. Okay, can dumb people do this? Yep, dumb people can open deals. You know, there, <laughs> there was this girl that I knew a couple years ago. She came over with some friends that I knew, she was a friend of a friend. She's playing basketball, she's like 23 or something. She goes, I'm making $18,000 a month. She living, she's living in Hollywood. I go, how are you making 18,000 a month? She's like, car sales. My low months, I make 18,000. She was pretty and she was using, she was a good salesperson. Sometimes women go, Ty, how do I get taken seriously? Well, I'm like, you know what? If you're good looking, might as well run with it. It's just like Angelina Jolie, did not become an accountant behind the door. She's like, God bless me with looks. I'm making money off these looks. Same with Brad Pitt. So uh, I would say sales can work for people that are ugly too. I mean, I'm not a model. I did great in sales. I, I don't think looks are necessary, but for certain things like car sales, it would definitely, when you're doing phone, if you're ugly, do phone sales. That's what I did. No one cared. Uh, if you're good looking, go door to door, go to car sales, do something where you interact. I, I do, I get w women that are in the program, Ty, can Christians do this? Can Christians sell? I feel like, yes. I feel like every, if you look at Christianity, people sold, at, at one point there was this many Christians, there was that many on the planet, and the idea went viral, you could say. Same with Islam, same with Buddhism, these things... Whenever you meet somebody that says, Ty, this person doesn't sell, you should fall. I'm like, what are you, a dumb, are you dumb? Are you, that's what I want to say. You, you think, when are you not being sold something? That's what people don't understand. Your parents sold you something. They sold you an ideology. They sh sold you a cultural norms. I was just, I'm reading a book by one of my mentors, a textbook from Harvard uh, called Personality, I forget what it is, Personality Inventory, but it's a, big textbook and, and there's something called evoked culture. Evoked culture means you're not born with it, you're sold on it. It's funny that I was reading, I didn't even plan on this, I just thought of it now. Evoked culture basically means we're born with some instincts, like a little baby naturally is afraid of falling, a little baby naturally closes up its hands, all this stuff. We're naturally maybe afraid of snakes, some people say, but Evoked culture makes people different, meaning if you're born in Stalin era Russia, you learn to be very suspicious. If you're born in, you know, Sweden at the same time, very similar regions of the world, Swedish people were much more, well, we'll say they were less traumatized by Stalin, right? So they were a little bit happier than you see in Eastern Europe. That's evoked culture. Meaning, 
They were sold something in Russia. They were sold a worldview. And everything's sales. Even biology is selling you on something. My friend says to me, he goes, I don't know why people have kids. He says, I think they're brainwashed by their genes. I say, they're not brainwashed by their genes, but they are sold. we are sold something by our genes. You know? Somebody said, how much is the Amazon course? Don't worry about it. You missed it. It's closed. Sink. Boom. Done. Can't get in. Sandra said, I found you on YouTube two years ago. So far, you've been my best mentor. Remember, don't just have one mentor, not just me. You know, have multiple people. Ty, speaking of good looks, who is a pretty lady with a beautiful smile and gorgeous eyes with you that said she was smoking weed and super high? That's a very long con. Are, are you smoking something else while you're writing that? That was like one of those no commas, no. That was Kim. You're talking about on my Instagram? Okay. Let's talk about more about sales. So there's four. Now let's break these down further. You have the opening of the deals, the closing of the deals, reading people, and then advanced ninja techniques. I'll just put advanced. That hold all three of these together. There's only really three core parts of sales. And then everything else is the adjustment to whether you're only on the phone, whether it's a high ticket item, a low ticket item, whether you're selling on live streams, all this stuff. By the way, the way I sell on live streams has never been done before. As far as I know, I'm pretty much the only person in the world doing this at scale. There's some other people doing it, but some of my live calls get 100 to 500,000 people in 24 hours on them. So I don't know if anybody, I mean, I realized the power of the internet when I was doing like playing basketball place in LA and I'm just playing basketball and I look at the stats and we ha we're like competing. I think Shark Tank back then was getting like 800,000 to a million people in 24 hours. And we're, we, I got like 500,000 and I didn't advertise it. I just was playing basketball, talking about investment deals. And I was going, the Lakers stadium holds 18,000 people. I have 500,000 people on. That means I just sold out 25 stadiums while I'm in my backyard. Like that's a whole, one of the things you're gonna get in this program that doesn't exist anywhere I'm on the cutting edge of a lot of stuff. Not everything, there's other people on the cutting edge. But there's, you're gonna see stuff, you're gonna learn stuff that you can't learn anywhere else, you know? So, Ty, help me help you. Have you seen The Wolf of Wall Street, the movie? Yes. Ty, thanks for the authenticity. Who else does this kind of stuff? <laughs> I don't know, Ty, between you, Russell Brunson, Grant Cardone, I'll be golden. Yeah, there's lots of people teaching sales, by the way, that are good. Wolf Wall Street, Jordan Belfort knows a lot about sales. Um, you, Grant Cardone knows a lot about sales. But, but I will tell you, nobody has a monopoly. I know about sales. And I got the numbers to back them up. My business partner knows about sales. We know about online. Me and Alex combined have done one billion in online sales. That's a big B. There ain't many people keeping up with that. 1 billion. We've also spent 500 million on our businesses, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, ads. That's also something not many people have done. That's sales too. People lie, but numbers don't. Now there's other people who have done more than us in other areas, but yeah. And I look at, I'm gonna tell you one thing that I do differently. Let's go to number three, which is reading people. I, no one else, and I think it's, I'm not sure why, but maybe it's my mentors, maybe it's my personality makeup. I'm an ENTP. If you look at Myers-Briggs, which are people that are very much focused on um, kind of reading people, you know? Hold on one second. Um, I think, I think a lot of sales systems make the mistake of just telling you there's one way to sell. There's not. At best, there's four ways to sell. There's a P, A, S, E. This is a system I actually created. Okay, the pay system. I invented this based off what I learned from some of the top scientists in the world who mentored me. So this is not like a pop culture kind of thing. This is actually rooted and grounded in real science. And it's, it's rooted on something called psychometrics. But P stands for practical. You have practical people. 
and they need a different so style. You have action-based people. They need their own way, social and emotional. It's a very simple archetype, but it's powerful in its application. And so what I see mostly with sales is people who are action-oriented just telling you what, what they like. Like, this is how you sell. You just go aggressive and you, well, not everybody is, only 25% roughly of the world is action oriented. And so you're gonna, you're going to basically, I won't say ostracize, but you're gonna unknowingly alienate people. The best way to sell is read people and then be like Bruce Lee. Can we pull up that Bruce Lee quote? Which one is the, can you pull up Bruce Lee on this one? Bruce Lee water video. This is what you want to be if you want to sell. Trust me. And Bruce Lee water. Is it frozen? Huh? It's loading. Are you connected to the internet? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll see if we can't pull it up. You guys might have seen that little quote. All right, I can pull it up right here. Let me do it right here. I'll just do it on my phone. Remember, whenever you gotta close a deal, this right here, Bruce Lee like water. I'll pull it up on YouTube, Let's see if you can hear. This is what it is, okay? There you go. It's one of the greatest sayings that Bruce Lee ever recorded. Be water. You want to be great at sales? Realize all people aren't the same. It's the biggest mistake in sales books that I read. The biggest mistake. And um, I'll go head to head with in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It depends on the situation. I think I can sell with anybody. And I think I got the numbers to back that too. I'm not the only good salesman in the world. There's people who are better than me. But with this system, I can beat people who are even better than me in sales, uh, skills, because I have the ability to m move between these type of people. For example, if you're selling, let's say you're a boss or the person on the phone, or you've got an agency and you're trying to close a customer for your social media marketing or your e-com, or even your Amazon, if you're doing an e-com agency, you're doing Amazon, or even you're doing online sales, which could be online marketing, like you're creating a video. Practical people like numbers. They like hard facts, like Bob, the reason, Susie, the reason you should buy from us is we're 17% cheaper than our nearest competitor. We're 28% more effective. Now that doesn't work on an emotional person because emotional people don't process things through the lens of logic. So an emotional person set goes, oops, I got another Bruce well, Lee video going house. on. This is <laughs> Bruce Lee's continuing to be water on my phone. Um, let me turn this off. So with this system, this pace system that I've been teaching, I think since 20, at least 2014, mostly to my people who work for me. I haven't really made this public because this is part of like my, remember I said ninja skills? This is part of my ninja skills. You don't always want everybody to know your ninja skills. That's why I'm just doing this for seven day, you know, seven days opening this test group. You can't, what works here definitely doesn't work. By the way, these are opposites, P and S. Believe it or not, practical and emotional are not 100% opposite. Okay, they're more like 90 degrees, not 180 degrees. A's and E's somewhat, I mean, A's and S's go together well. P's and E's go together somewhat. P and S's oppose each other. E's and A's oppose each other, okay? And S and P's oppose each other. So you have to understand your style. You have to read yourself first. If you're a P, you gotta understand, 25% of people you meet, you're naturally gonna turn them 
away with your style of persuasion, closing, and sales. Uh, those of you who are, you know, E's, you're naturally going to, because E, E's are emotional and they're always worried about the worst case situation. They're also always a little bit negative. If you're an A, you're an action-based person. You're like, let's go do this. Let's quit our job. Let's make a lot of money. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And you make that mistake. Okay, we've got a lot of people on here watching. So those of you who came, we got 2,500 on YouTube, 1,636 on Insta. How many on Facebook? Lowly Facebook here only has 158. How's our lowly Twitter? What are we on on Twitter, Rick? Like 12 people? Twitter live. 61. 61. Woo! Um, let's do another $100 giveaway. I'm rewarding people that have been paying attention for this whole time. Okay? So I'm going to go through what I had on the page. In sales, I said, what's one of the hardest type of sales you could ever learn on would be what kind of sales? What kind of sales? Rick, you cannot win the hundred dollars. Let's go. Instead of survey says, we got live stream says, boom. All this live stream stuff is so cutting edge. Like no, it's a crazy. Nobody's doing live streams and doing direct sales on live streams. I'm going, I guarantee you I'll have more people watching this than we're at any basketball stadium. The Lakers play, Lakers got beat by the they got beat by the Grizzlies or something today, Zach. Hey, is there one of those uh, Kings are waters? Playoffs, not yeah, no. Oh, sweet. I have my, there's about this much left. Thank you, Rick, for well, keep... water Oh. Why does this say AIDS immunity if you drink this water? I'm pretty sure you're not legally allowed to say that. Do you see that? <laughs> Where did we get this water? <laughs> this was at Shell. No way. I gotta put this on. I, I'm not even gonna put this on my social media. It says AIDS immunity. Somebody gonna go to somebody gonna get in trouble with the FTC. You just go drink our water and you can't get diseases. I wanna make their commercials. What in the world? That's wild. Please. You didn't get AIDS. Well, <laughs> I drink water from Shell. <laughs> I I gotta look at I. I gotta be like, is this label legal? This this is, this is crazy. I gotta put this on. Guys, we just got this water. I'm doing my live stream here. We just got this water from Shell gas station. Is this legal to say the benefit of drinking water? This water brand. That's insane. Do they have one for herpes? <laughs> Zach can not ruin my thing. <laughs> All right, let me edit Zach out here at the what? end. Edit what? But that's crazy. Can I get your uh, anti-chlamydia water? <laughs> this can't even be. All right, I got to do this one more time. Zach always got it. <laughs> hey, guys, I got this water at the Shell station. Is this legal to say? That a benefit of drinking alkyl eight is this? That's nuts. That is insane. That okay. First rule of sales: don't oversell the benefits because you definitely cannot claim. I don't even want to drink this water. What state of mind were these people in? Thank you, Rick. That is crazy. You guys see this? Okay, who made this water? It says it's manufactured in Escondido, California. Water quality, can we call, I gotta call this number right now while I'm live. 1-800, this, this is insane. I got Somebody said it's holy water. It's holy water? <laughs> this is the kill vampires? I'm calling this right now. This says AIDS immunity if you drink this water. We got this from Stella State. I'm going to put it on speakerphone. I'm not the only person calling. Everyone's calling at once. 1-800-377-9132. By the way, please recycle it, Rick. Okay. So, yeah, so that brings up a good point. I think it's saying to age your immunity. Right? Like, uh. 
Oh, helps your immunity. That makes sense. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> they know that that's a double entendre. <laughs> they know. Okay. You were doing the giveaway for that. Oh, what was my giveaway? Sorry. Let me scroll. Let me look here. I haven't looked at Instagram for a second. Okay, the answer. Sing Hanuj. Wow. Sing H A N U J 22 said life insurance. I know a lot of you said it. Remember, it's the first person I see. So we got a winner on Instagram. By the way, you've got less than seven days, or you have seven days actually, to get into. I'm doing a four month certification sales and closing black belt system training. It's a test group. You go to tylopez.com slash sales. I, I announced it a little while ago and we already got the first person in. Right away somebody got in. I haven't even looked at the statistics. All right. But yeah, this one will actually close in seven days. So you won't be able to get in. It's not like I'm not going to keep it open at a higher price. I'm just going to completely close it. Okay, hold on. Oh, there we go. Jamie. Karan Lacroix. Karan Lacroix on Twitter just got in. Yeah, I want, oh, let me find, I got to scroll back. Let me find the first, I think you're the second person, Karan. I like to keep track. Whenever I launch these test groups, because I've been launching these, getting crazy results for now six years. And um, I didn't always keep track of who the first person was. I can look back through our database, but it's cooler to find. Let me find this first person. What, what time was that? There it is. Ceci Terraquez in Littleton, Colorado. Off my Snapchat, I posted it. You can see it right here. Ceci. But you were the second that just got in now, so cool. Um, what's going on, guys? Ty, I want success. You leave clues. I need a friend like Ty Lopez. You do a class on copywriting? That's another class. That, that's a whole other thing. I'm gonna tell you this. Okay, let's go through. So you got all the, all the tools in the modern world that are insane. From WeWork to having a, an office that you don't have to lock yourself in 10 years. You got Alipay, Alibaba, AliExpress, right? Where you can do drop shipping. You got Shopify to build quick websites. Amazon, you can be selling online on the largest portal ever created by man. You have social media marketing. The youngest billionaire in history, Kylie Jenner, sold her makeup just off her Snapchat and Instagram. You got affiliate ways to make money through ClickBank and affiliate networks. You have Upwork to find talent, virtual assistants. You can find people now working with you from around the world, talented people. I'm going into 33 countries. I've been about seven already for many years. Uh, Stripe to process. All this, but if you want to make money, it's all held together by sales and persuasion. I've seen so many people go into different programs, buy different books, and over and over again, the people that don't get the results are the people who suck at sales and persuasion. Whether it be creating a sales a persuasive video, if you look at, pull up Dollar Shave Club video. This video right here, because it was persuasive, and I'm gonna, I'll start, I'm gonna break down, I'm doing a seven day free training. When the seven day, during the seven day free training, if you like it, you can get in the four month certification program. But during that, Tom, right. I want you, look at this. I'm Mike, founder of dollarshaveclub.com. What is dollarshaveclub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are great. Each razor has stainless steel blades. And Pause there for a second. Shift. Pause. Go back. Let me show you. By the way, what he did right there, for those of you who don't know, that's called pa pattern interruption. So I was talking about more ninja advanced stuff. The reason, and also right here, is called a availability bias. He understood one of the 25 cognitive biases. By the way, he sold his company. He was an actor, a broke actor in Hollywood. I remember when he started, I believe it was 2013, sold his company for 1.3 or $1.2 billion to Unilever. Not a bad exit. I bet you he owned at least 15% of it, which means 
for the make, and it was all built off this video, which, which was persuasive. And he probably, my guess is he pocketed on the low end, on the low end, two hundred million dollars. I don't, I don't know him personally, but uh, I once Google invited me to give a talk, and they're the head of marketing and all this. Way. So he did a pattern interrupt. He knew that at this time people would start to get bored. He walked through just randomly a piece of paper, but he also has this there because he wanted to make a strong point and he understood that different types of people, going back to here, with the PACE system, you have to know how to read people. And so people who are more uh, practical, right, they tend to be visual learners, they need to read it. Those people who are action-based tend to be real quick, they're like sharp, they didn't need to read it. They could hear him say when he said, our blades are beep, great, right? So. Because he, this is called, by the way, I'm, I'll, I'll try to get a look. we got four minutes. How much money do we have left to give away on Instagram? Uh, you gave away 400. So I got 600 bucks. Instagram, when this goes, we're going to reset it. Come back and win the 600 bucks. Um, dimensionalizing is moving between these pace personality types. So that's what he did here. This is stuff that they don't teach you at school at all. Nobody understands this. There's not one class I've ever seen in the world that talks about dimensionalization of personality types. This is like advanced PhD stuff. In fact, this is some ways too advanced for most 99% of people on this call. But I will be going into this in the four month program. You learn this, you make money from anywhere in the world. You lose all your money, you'll have it right back. Mark Cuban I know and, and I was talking to him and I said, um, hey, what would you do if you lost all your money? He said, I'd just start over in sales. So that's how I started selling door to door trash can, trash bags, he told me. If you can sell, you're gonna be good, you know? Todd, you have to be a celebrity to make great sales. No, this guy wasn't a celebrity, he was a nobody. But he's a wealthy nobody. Do you know this guy? Or do you follow him on Instagram? Anybody know his name? No. But he made more money than any social media influencer <laughs> in the last couple of years. I mean, not than any, than most social media influencers. Okay, Ty, can you talk about the best types of sales that you recommend in getting into before real estate? All you real estate agents, all you people in my social media marketing programs, all you people doing online sales, all you affiliate, if you don't know how to sell as a black belt, by the way. So I do jujitsu. You got white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, then you have coral belt, then you have a red belt. Coral belt and red belt, I have an even more advanced system, but that's not open to the public right now. So. I'm gonna give you the black belt system, okay? I'm gonna give you the black belt system. I'm gonna teach you the blue belt, the purple belt, the brown belt, the black belt. You're already a white belt. White belt you get for nothing. So you don't, I'm not gonna teach you how to get a white belt. You are a white belt if you haven't been in this program. So I got four belts. It's a four month certification program. I'm gonna put the link below um, or you can just go to tylopez.com slash sales or just go to my website. It'll be right there in the middle. It's closed in seven days. I'm not doing this. I'm not gonna train, I'll do these free trainings for tens of thousands of people at a time, but the intricate four month program, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. So Ty, black belt system, gotta get your butt kicked before you earn the path to get there. There you go. Ty, I'm a green belt. Yeah, Jiu Jitsu doesn't have green belt. Other things have green belt, but yeah. Ty, what do you think it is about you, Ty, that contributes to your selling ability? Training, I was trained. There's some people that are a little more natural at sales, but that's irrelevant. I could, if I put a non-natural salesperson through this, they'd be better than most natural salespeople, just from training. You don't really, there's no person naturally good at jujitsu. There's some people who are like kind of athletic, but I could take an unathletic person, if they became a black belt in jujitsu, they'll beat anybody who is athletic with no training. Anybody, really. Um, so, someone wants, oh, finish playing this video here. We still got 600 bucks to give away. 1,600 people. Each razor has pattern interrupt. Blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs Pause there. 
That was called self-deprecation. That's an important part in sales. He like said, I'm good at tennis, but then he missed, right? So he was trying to show. That's called liking bias in the cognitive biases. To make yourself likable, you have to be self-deprecating. Some of the greatest salespeople in the world you don't think are salespeople are like Warren Buffett. And he's very self-deprecating. Does that make sense? Um, Ty, what do you think of Jordan Belfort's system? Yeah, he has a good system, I think. Instagram just stopped. Oh, so you need to reset Instagram. Yeah. Ty, uh, how much do you think the packaged water industry is worth? Well, ready to drink. Yeah, jujitsu would get mauled by a wrestler. Not really. But remember, wrestlers are trained that you shouldn't go on your back. Jiu-jitsu, being on your back is your main defensive position. Um, anyone notice the symbolics behind the paper around his neck? I don't want anyone else near my face with a shark. You're talking about this? Yeah, he's catching your attention with many little things, you know? Matt Hughes almost killed Gracie. No, Matt Hughes lot did not beat mixed martial artists. I mean, he eventually got... Matt was just watching Matt Hughes. Look at uh, George St. Pierre. Destroyed Matt Hughes. George St. Pierre trains in, with one of the main teachers who does jujitsu in uh, New York City, but he also is well-rounded. You got to read. Some people don't know nothing about history. You know Google exists. You can't just make up theories anymore about who's better. Um, Ty, does anyone have the Insta link? You can just go to tylopez.com slash sales. And I want to say, this is not the cheapest program that I have out there. Okay, why? I don't know, because I, I guess I don't want to make a $10 version of it, and I don't necessarily want to have, take a 100,000 people through my sales black belt training. I pretty much reserve it for people who work for me, just so you know. Um, I, it's mostly for people who work for me, but I decided to make this available because I did a Twitter bowl a few days ago. Okay. Let's see here. How do I give away this 600? Da -da -dee. Yeah, that's what the bias was, that first bias he had. Okay, what is the first thing that he did? I'm gonna be giving away 100 bucks right now. $100 right now. What did I say he did when he ran through that piece of paper to increase the ability, I mean, the likelihood that people pay attention? What did he do? <laughs> Somebody said, sell me this rager. Ty, maybe too much stuff going on could distract people from the actual cell. Somebody said sex. No. There we go. Joshimar Senega said pattern interrupt. On what platform? On YouTube. You got to reply, Joshimar Senega. You got to reply with your cash app or PayPal. Ty, Google says your net worth is only $5 million. Forget Google. Google don't know nothing about me. That's from 10 years ago. And who cares? It's funny. People go, Google says your net worth is only $5 million. Let's say my net worth is only $5 million. That's still a lot. <laughs> people are stupid. And people, you can't compare people. Remember, Warren Buffett, now my net worth is not $5 million, but I'm just saying, why is that a thing? You can't compare me with people that are way older than me. People are like, well, this 70-year-old's net worth is $500 million. Well, he's 70. You ever heard of compounding? For those of you, if you can be worth $5 million when you're young, you let that sucker camp compound, you might not be Jeff Bezos, but you'll have a couple hundred million by the time you retire. So, I don't know. I never understood that one. But now people are trying to guess. $500 billion. No, my net worth is not $500 billion. Your net worth, I would guess, Ty, is conservatively 50 million. I mean, look, one of my companies that I own is worth, I mean, Mentor Box, I, I won't even say, but it's, it's worth a lot. Um, 
Someone said, Ty, my net worth is negative. 10 million in loans? What did you do, man? See, you didn't know how to negotiate deals. Real estate, if you don't negotiate the deal right, you're gonna get destroyed. Hiring people, you don't negotiate right, you're gonna get, have your payroll too high. Come on, man. Can t people, person be financially free in three years? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. If you're starting, this one dude's starting 10 million. <laughs> Somebody said, well, Google also says Trump's hair is real. <laughs> what is it? Is Trump's hair, well, I don't even know. Zach, what do you think Trump's hair is? Because see, Tr Zach is a Trump supporter. He loves Trump. So you will give me unbiased. I, I like to know. You got to know who's going to give you unbiased uh, advice. Uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon pulled it. So what do you think it could be? Is it like There's hair like plugs off spot. the back or something? I don't know. One of those surgeries? I don't know, because he's had that hairstyle since the 80s. Oh, he's had the I same think. hair. Yeah, it's, I think it's his real hair, but I think he's, he tries to cover up a bald spot. <laughs> so he says he has badger hair? Comb over. All right. Let's not talk about Trump's hair. <clears throat> By the way, whether you, I'm going to tell you this. For those of you who hate Trump, you better get somebody. You better buy this program for whoever runs for the Democratic nomination or whoever wins the Democratic. Because Hillary Clinton, even though she won the popular vote, she didn't win the electoral vote, which means she didn't understand applied, focused persuasion. You gotta, you have to persuade the electoral college states, and Donald Trump understood that, and he won. So if you love Trump. You better understand sales. If you l hate Trump, the way out is sales, unfortunately. And let me just say this. People think that sales means, means pushy. No. That it means manipulative. No. Let me define sales for you because this is a huge thing. Sales is getting people to hear your side of the story. That's it. The definition sales equals listen to your side of the story. You do know that most people, you do know that most people aren't listening to you when you're talking, right? Seriously, most people are not listening to you because they're thinking about their own thing, they're ignoring you, they have short attention span, you're not saying it very persuasively, so they're just doing other stuff. Someone said, did the bus fall down, Ty? No, that was Rick Rapp. Rick did a Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> he got his foot wrapped around the cord. <laughs> um, Trump was talking to everyone. Hillary was talking to Trump and her crew. I mean, I, I bet you Hillary would have won if she had taken Bernie Sanders for her sure. vice president. Don't you think, Zach? She only needed a few more votes. Bernie brought, but he brings a lot of hate. I don't particular. I don't like Bernie policy, you know. Someone said he's old. He doesn't know what he's doing. Ty, will your ecom agency program work for artists and musicians? Yeah, I mean the agency programs that I have work, but a lot of them are closed. Are you know, they're closed, so you can't get in them. Beto 2020. You think Beto will win? <laughs> no. Oh, he might get the nomination. Zach hopes that Beto wins. I'll tell you who would give Trump a run for the money. Beto, please. Zach, I'll tell you who would give Trump a run. I think Trump's scared of one person. That's Michelle Obama. People love, if you talk about persuasive, people who love her love her way more than people who like Beto or, I mean, I don't know. She's got one of the best. She's got a book out. It's like one of the best selling bio autobiographies in history. Ty, can you do an email marketing course? We will cut in this four month black belt program. We will get into um, some email marketing stuff. It's not only email. Remember, so you basically have sales is getting people to listen to your side. So let me just ask you this. Do you want people to listen to you? Learn this black belt system. Go through the four month, get the certification. Somebody asks, will this help you in your social life? Will this help you in your dating life? Well, most of the time when you go on a date, the person on the other side is just by listening to themselves. Really, they're there like narcissistically. They're just like, what can you do for me? 
They're not even listening, you know, to your side of the story. When you're trying to get a job and you're talking to your boss about a raise or hiring you, they're not thinking about you. They're thinking about other stuff in their life. But if you're persuasive, all of a sudden they're like, hey, oh, really? I better hire you. I've had people try to get a job with me in the least persuasive way ever. I mean, let me, what's the least persuasive thing? Somebody, we, we, I put up a job post if you want to come work with me. I got 8,000 people in one week applied. And some of them are just ridiculous. I'm like, or you must optimize literally to make sure I don't hire you. People are like, you better hire me. For example, this is not a great way to get somebody interested. Or people, um, I've had, <laughs> we've had people come in for jobs. What's the craziest thing we've had someone ever come in for a job? Well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you a crazy thing someone did and I actually hired him. There was a guy, it's a kind of a cool story. I haven't told this story in a long time, but in 2014, I think, a guy, his name was Christopher Lopez. I think he was on my social media a little bit in 2015. I'm in my garage, actually the same garage that I shot my garage, here in my garage video, because I used to have a gym and a, a gym and an office in there. I think you, little ninja tip, build a gym office because the rush you're gonna get out of shape. Every time I have a gym office, I get in shape. Whenever I don't, I'm out of shape. Jerome says, time in my 40s, is it too late for me to be a beast at this? Nope. That was about the time Ray Kroc was going door to door selling milkshake machines before he bought, he didn't get into McDonald's till in his 50s. This guy comes to my garage while I'm working out. He goes, Ty, you don't know me. I'm homeless right now. I li and I occasionally, ha my, my grandpa lets me sleep there once in a while. My parents, I think his parents had died. His mom and dad had died. I live with my grandpa. I'm basically homeless. Can I work for you, man? Um, I said, how did you find my house? This is back before I had Snapchat. I barely had, I, I had Instagram, but He's like, I've been walking here for two days. Or he's like, I, I, first of all, he walked from Long Beach to Hollywood, which is I think 37 miles, okay? I was born in Long Beach, it's far. Then he came and he walked around up in the Hollywood Hills till he found a house that looked like my house, which was crazy, that's hard. You guys know where I live. Like imagine trying to find that house randomly. He found it and I ended up giving him a job. I said, I'll hire you for a short period of time. And uh, I did, I gave him a job for I think a year. Then he went off, he, he started doing network marketing. Uh, he learned sales, he did stuff. I trained him as best I could. I wasn't with him every day or anything, but he worked and then he went and I saw him about a year later in an airport. I shot a video, I still have the video, I was on my social media. And he said, Ty, I want you to know I have multiple streams of income. He was like, he would go up to Alaska. I think he was like a fisherman. You know how you make all that money like yeah. wild as catch? He would do that, for, he goes, I'd do that for three months. Then I saved up all the money that I made and I, I bought um, a couple of part, his family's from Mexico. He, but he started buying up real estate. He's like, I have either one or two apartment complexes that I bought and my income now is like four to $8,000 a month. He was like 24 by that time. So by learning sales, learning how to build multiple streams of income, he had learned how to do network marketing. It was like a coffee or something. I forget, I can't remember the whole story, but I meet a lot of people now, like start stuff. This is 2015, I remember, because this is when we moved into the Sunset Plaza office. And he had that, and then he went all the way um, to Alaska. He convinced somebody to give him a job. Then he convinced, he did the negotiations uh, and bought a couple apartments and then he had, you have to learn how to read people because if you let the wrong people in your apartment complex, they will destroy your place. And so he learned that and uh, it's a cool story. I just, I haven't talked to him since. Um, anyway. Can you teach me? I need to increase sales in my barber shop. Once again, now, there's two things that you gotta do. Let me just explain this. There's sales and marketing. So what's the difference 
who knows the difference between sales versus marketing? What is the difference? I'm gonna give 100 bucks to the first answer that I defined this on my Snapchat earlier today. What's the difference between sales versus marketing? $100. We still got 400 to give. What is the difference? Because someone asked me about their barbershop. We got 3,700 people on YouTube, 545 on Instagram. Sales is convincing and marketing is exposure. Mm, no. But getting warmer, maybe. Sales is telling your story. Marketing is the promotion of your story. Um, marketing is advertising. Sales is pitching. Eh. Uh, let's see. Oops, sorry. 60 new Facebook comments. Sales is you move a product. The market, you try to get them interested. Marketing gets the phone to ring. Sales is what happens once you get it. Sales is active. Marketing is passive. Ooh, I wouldn't say that. Marketing leads to sales. Marketing gets sales. I mean, sales you do, marketing works for you. That's warmer on Facebook. What do we got on Instagram? Marketing is driving traffic and sales is what comes after the traffic. Marketing is advertising. Well, okay, some of this is semantics because it's however you want to define it. You could say that online advertising is sales or you could call it marketing. I'm just going to give you my, I, what I talked about on my social media earlier. Say sales is getting attention of the people. Sales is the theory, marketing is the practice. Nobody's gotten it. I posted it, it's on my Snapchat right now. Sales is pushing the product, marketing is telling a story. Sales is selling the commodity versus marketing. Man, nobody, come on. Sales is money marketing. Marketing is a Facebook ad and sales are conversions. Marketing should make selling su superfluous. <laughs> sales is your work ethic. Marketing is the work done. Come on, I gave it on my snap, right? Who's getting this hundred bucks? I keep it simple. K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. There, Mike Cass on YouTube. Mike said, marketing is automation of sales. That's how I define it. Again, it's semantics. You can define it. The question for the 100 bucks was, what did I say on my social media earlier? So Mike Cass, please reply right now on YouTube or we can't send you the money. What's your cash app or PayPal email? YouTube does not have good DM system. Mike Cass, we need your email to pay you. So this is how I think about it. Marketing, like what we do online, you, you guys see my YouTube videos probably. Most people in the world, in the United States have seen them. With, oh, there we go. Mike says, yo, Ty, Mike, what's up, man? Not you, Iron Mike. There's another guy swooping in for this hundred named Iron Mike. No, Mike Cass, you just put Mike Cass. Mike Cass, I need your email. Marketing is automated sales. But here's the thing, you can't automate everything. To me, sales is more one-to-one, -on -one -to -one, okay? It could be one-to-one -on, -one on chat, it could be one-to-one -on, -one on email, it could be one-to-one -one in person, it could be one-to-many on stage, I would consider that somewhat similar but at the end of the day if it's automated to me it's marketing so I have a marketing team we have all kinds of automated funnels automated VSLs automated commercials they're running all the time when I sleep that thing just run and it's running to the tune of you know between let's say 50 to five hundred thousand dollars a day we do through automatic marketing okay that's kind of like my goal uh and then sales i've got a phone sales team i'm in a way doing sales to you guys because i'm answering one-on-one -on -one questions this is not fully automated i'm not a hologram here's mentor box today did twenty thousand two hundred dollars we're not actually we don't even have marketing on today i think we're testing something that's just recurring stuff. But if you say, when we turn marketing on a mentor box, we do like 50 to 70,000 a day. 
right now. And that's automation. And that's a separate skill, you know what I'm saying? That when I do this right here, I gotta take my time and talk to you and answer Raina Jones or John, Don Jabra. So I had a $40 change your life, OB the King 100 on Instagram at. See, I'm talking in one on one. $40? <laughs> $40 made me realize I was in big trouble. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta go low before you go up, unfortunately. Sometimes you've got to go low before you get up. Ty, you're not cracking your phone. Man, that's why I have this crazy otter box, which now has become like viral. People, when I found somebody who's like, I bought this green, because people say this is ugly, but that's fine, because it stands out. I've seen people all have the same color. I had, there was a party, people all had the same color iPhone cases, and they all, <laughs> people grabbed somebody else's phone. Ty, did you watch the Oscars? No. Ty, you're really good at your crap, bro. Top notch. Thank you. I don't know if I'm, I'm trying to get better every day. So I want you guys, you need to learn marketing, but a lot of the things that I've been training people, like an e-com agency, a social media marketing agency, on, uh, uh, you know, doing an Amazon agency, all these things, you gotta be able to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. If you wanna get a client to pay you $2,500 a month to manage your social media, or to manage their e-com, like you're not gonna do that. You can do it on automated webinar funnels, but I'd rather generate the lead and talk to people on the phone, man. That That's, if you ask me, when I'm going after, like I've done big deals. I've done deals where I get a million dollar check from somebody. Anybody here ever had a million dollar check? I've closed deals where someone hands me a $250,000. I remember the first time someone handed me a $250,000 check. I don't know if this is when you were around, Rick. Brick fell asleep. Uh, this is like 2004. It's the first big check that I ever did in a deal. And someone just wrote a check and it's like 250. I remember being like, wow. Because I didn't have that much money. I had a little money back then. I was making like eight grand a month or so. That's something somewhere around there. I'd say six figures I was making. But this person just wrote two, five, zero, comma, zero, zero, zero. And then put the little zero slash 100 and then wrote out the words 2TWO50. I remember going, that's, that's, that's a big check. So I closed a $250,000 deal, but you know, since then I've seen bigger and bigger deals. And when you start closing, you know, a million dollar check, do you really want to try to automate that? You think people are going to, you're going to automate sales? You think you're going to have a commercial? A Super Bowl commercial that people are gonna go, yeah, yeah, that's right, million. No, rich people don't work that way. You have to convince them in person. Does that make sense? Ty, have you ever had a deal go bad? Yeah, I mean, you have deals that don't close. You can't close people. And usually it comes, almost always, so sales is a combination, by the way, sales is a, so sales here is a combination of reading people, okay? plus understanding life cycles of leads, okay? Life cycles, these are two things. That equals the money. You gotta both know how to read people, but you gotta also understand life cycles because you can't make somebody write you a $250,000 check when they're not ready. Okay, Mikey Kassang, that's your cash app, okay. Dollar sign Mikey Kassang at Cash App. Yeah, I got it. You got it? Yep. We're gonna get how much money we got left? Ty, tell us closing techniques. Okay, so four hundred. I got four hundred left to give. And uh, we're at ten percent of one of the phones. Which one? Twitter. Twitter. We won't okay. be on Instagram, but we have a backup for Instagram. It's okay. We're about done. And if Twitter dies, we only have fifty four people. Fifty four people. All you people on Twitter. Man, YouTube keeps Rising, we're at 3,838. <laughs> People are arguing who said it first. Remember, you might have said something first, it's just whenever I, whenever I notice it. You, I gotta see it, because there's a lot of people on here, believe it or not. All right, what else was I gonna say? 
Oh, somebody asked me for an actual example. So here's the thing on closing. You can get rid of this uh, Dollar Shave Club guy behind me. We're gonna, in the four month program, okay, I wanna take you from blue belt, purple belt, brown, and the goal is black belt, okay? Oops, I wrote belt, black, black belt, okay? Now, in order to be here, a black belt can close 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000, maybe not a million. million dollar deal is more like when you're, there's belts beyond this. There's like coral belt and red belt in jujitsu. Coral belt is a, is a hybrid. My teacher, Higa Machado, has a coral belt. And so when we think about this, one of the stages you've got to learn is how to close deals. But here's the secret to closing is opening it correctly. That's the secret. Just think about like social life. What's the secret to making a friend or to getting a date go on a second date with you? Is it the final sentence that you say to them? No, it's how good the rest of the experience was. If you take a girl out or a guy or whatever, and you meet at Starbucks for an hour, and the goal is to close them and persuade them to go on a second date with you, if the first 58 minutes are crap, you, there's nothing you can say in the last two minutes. That will close. So you can't polish a turd. People always ask me that. Ty, this is what I interpret. They don't say this. Ty, I have a horrible business idea. How do I market this? I'm like, you don't. <laughs> Ty, I have horrible, I've had horrible conversations with this customer. How do I close them? You can't. You cannot polish a turd. You hear me? You can't do it. So the key to closing is opening. Now, with that said, you do have to know how to close. Hold on one second, guys. Whoops. And a lot of people are afraid of closing. The main thing is know how to open and then understand the life cycle that, of the sale. For example, if somebody don't have a $10,000 in their bank account, you can't close a $10,000 deal very easily unless you try to convince them to go in debt or rob a bank. So part of it is also knowing your, who you're trying to close. That's why I said reading people. First thing I do when I talk to somebody I gotta know what their budget is. It's amazing how many people teach sales and forget that. <laughs> they just teach people, read this script and then close. I'm going, wait a second, you telling me? Are you gonna sell somebody a thousand dollar item who has a hundred dollars in bank account? Math doesn't add up. Math doesn't add up. So the beginning of the open is understanding the person Understanding their psychometric type, if they're a P, A, an S, or an E. Understanding where they are in this product buying cycle. Like, are they somebody just tire shopping? I mean, tire kicking? They're, they're not ready, they're just window shopping? For me, a big part of why I use marketing is to cut through in an automated fashion. Bring me the people that are actually interested now so I don't waste my time. You see what I'm saying? What I do with people that aren't ready, I put them on my email list. And that's the thing, I, it's mind blowing. Nightclubs, I've been, I, I used to own a nightclub, be in the nightclub business, but now I go to Vegas, I go to these big, big, huge clubs. They don't even get your text or email. What I used to do in my club, I'd be like, if you are on the VIP email list, you get to go in the shorter line. People would sign up all, and I would hire good looking people men and women to walk around, and this is before there was like tap, even like iPads. Now I just hand out iPad, walk around, be like, put your email in, and then you, they have to verify it so they can't give you a fake email, right? They gotta double opt in or text. If nightclubs would do that, they would build this monster list that they could close continually. So, but that takes sales in person at first, and then you can automate it later, if that makes sense. So Ty says, 
Uh, Iron Mike says, I can 10x your company, Ty. Great, do it. I'm happy. If somebody thinks they know more than me in business, I'm like, good. I like to be around people who know more. Ty, I own a business, but looking for people in New York. Well, if you wanna hire people, I was just talking to a friend of mine who has a $30 million supplement business. He was at this conference. His biggest thing that's keeping him to go in from six to 60 million, he can't hire people. I'm like, that's sales. That's persuasion. You gotta persuade people to work for you. People have a lot of options right now. Should I upgrade? I sell TVs and make 56 grand a year. Ty, is this better than Cardone University? I've never been through Cardone University, so I, I cannot answer that for you. Uh, I know Grant has sold a lot of stuff and knows a great bit about sale. The better way to think about it is, if it's me, you can make a lot of money in sales with no college degree from scratch. I'd learn from a lot of people. And um, mine's only open for seven days. That's the difference. I'm not sure, I think his is open. I don't even know how, how it is, but. Um, <laughs> Ty, you actually can polish a turd. Miss, Mythbuster did it. <laughs> I would like to see that episode. Man, how hard is it to hire good workers? Not hard if you understood persuasion. Um, nice sweater, looks good on you. Thank you. Part of sales? Also, presentation. That's another thing. I'm going to talk about this for a second. People tell you to sell. To sell and persuade. They tell you you have to wear a suit. Well, why? That's BS. But there is a time when you have to wear a suit. You have to know your audience. Some people will tell you, you know, for, for casual. Some people will tell you you need to mirror. But mirroring is a very, in many ways, I don't buy into the mirroring thing. You see people teaching this in sales and persuasion, they're, they go, okay, you need to mirror the person. So if they're talking slow, you need to talk slow. If they're dressed in a suit, you need to wear a suit. I do not think that's true. Um, what I think is true, there's a lot of people wearing suits that wish they weren't wearing a suit. So if I wear a suit when they're wearing a suit, I actually epitomize what it is they don't like in their life. Remember, a lot of people have to wear a suit. How many people would wear a suit if they didn't have to? Some people. I mean, I got a place in Manhattan. There are people who like to wear suits. They like to do the, the power play. Boom. But, like, does, are most people like, you know, Manhattan Wall Street types? No. So I do not buy into the thing that you always need to wear a suit. Um, I do not buy into the mirroring thing. Some people talk fast because they're nervous. In fact, anxiety is massive. It's a massive issue in the modern world. So if somebody's anxious, this is most sales books teach you this, mirroring. Okay. Well, I reach a lot of people. In fact, I've re reached for sure as many people as any sales trainer in history. I know that. I know that because I got... I can just go, okay, I can show you guys. I don't know if any salesperson, here's my little YouTube analytics here. I like, this is real time, I'm not, my watch time since, I started my channel in 2015, so. I'm at 1.8 billion minutes watched. There's no sales trainer that I know of that's gotten 1.8 billion minutes. Let me see my, and then, you never know how many are unique views, but let's just say 556 million views. That's people who have actually watched, YouTube is longer than 30 seconds. So this is, if we use Instagram way of doing it or Facebooks, this would be at billions a minute. So I'm just saying 100 million people have watched my stuff. I've reached a lot of people. I can promise you this, mirroring people doesn't always work. If I'm talking to a nervous person who talks really fast, like, hey Ty, why should I do this? Best thing I can do is slow down. Mirroring all these books out there are telling you to go fast because they're going fast, but then you increase their anxiety So it doesn't build rapport. That's that's BS The best way to build rapport is understand how to read people if I know I'm talking to an anxious person the best thing I can do is Alleviate their anxiety is to allay their fears. That's better 
then go to go. Oh, you got two people in a room mirroring each other. It's, we should try that one time, Zach. It's a social experiment. Just like keep escalating. One person's wearing a suit. I'm gonna wear like an even more formal suit. He's gonna come back the next day. We're gonna be <laughs> wearing like old timey. I'm gonna have a monocle and a and a hat like the Mr. Peanut or whatever. <laughs> I got a nickel, folks. <laughs> I'll have my WC Field cigar. I, I don't I don't buy that. So uh, I think that a lot of the stuff people teach in sales, I've tested it. I wished it worked, you know, but I, it doesn't. If it would work, I would do it. You think I, I like making money. You think I'm going to be like, no, I want to do my, I have no theory that I'm attached to except what's effective. You, by the way, you do not have to be an extrovert to be good at sales. That's a myth. I have some introverts who work for me. In fact, we just hired a new guy in, in my Manhattan office. He went through the, out of 8,000 people, he basically the first one I've hired out of that 8,000. And uh, he's from New Jersey, kind of Manhattan. And the cool thing about it is this dude's an introvert, but he can turn it on and off. And because he's an introvert, remember half the world's an introvert. Extroversion and introversion, if you look at something like the Myers-Briggs or the Hexaco score um, or the big five models, it pretty much comes out 50-50, roughly. Um, I think certain countries, believe it or not, you know, America has more extroverts than, let's say, Norway or Sweden. Um, and the reason is because of migration patterns. Dr. David Buss actually studied this. Islands in the Mediterranean have more introverts than people who migrated to the big cities of like, you know, in, in Athens, Greece, or Rome, Italy, that attracts. So big cities actually have more extroverts. Not always, that's a blanket statement, which is never 100% accurate, but Sandra says she's an extrovert salesman. What's up? Uh, you want me to kill this like at 1%? I don't know if it'll save it. If yeah, you can, yeah, just, you can stop it. Um, Sales is the exchange of a commodity for money. The action of selling something marketing is a science of supply and demand. No, that is definitely not true. It sounds good. You used a lot of words. Marketing is not the science of supply and demand. I mean, maybe economics speaks to supply and demand. There is no exact science of supply and demand, but that's an economic theory. That's not it. But good try. I will give you warmer. Ty, I want to see Ty get in a boxing match with Putin. I don't want to mess with Putin, man. Am I this that dude? Zach said, "Why don't you just leave it on there?" No one's saying, "Why don't you just stop it and leave it on there to weigh the thing?" Why take it off? Why do we have so many introverts in this world? Oh, easy. Because <laughs> it's called the actual te technical term for this. Oh man, it's not a sort of matching, but there's a scientific word for this. Okay. All right, Instagram, we're about to reset. How much money we have left to give? Let's give it away. You got seven days. Put in the link below. There's a link in YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You got seven days. Who's going to get in this? Next four months, I'm going to take you to black belt level in sales, persuasion, closing. We got $400 one person's going to get right now. So here's how this goes. I'm going to reward people who have been paying attention. Um, so, we'll come right back. Uh, what? On Instagram, we'll come right back. You want to... Is it dead? It's like at three percent. So I was going to go to this phone. Well, I'm just going to give it away right now. You should have these on low battery mode. Do you have them? Here we go. For four hundred dollars, uh, how much? Uh, no. Let's see. For four hundred dollars, what's the name of the company that the guy used one viral video to sell? to grow and sell his company for over a billion dollars. What's the name of that company? All right, I'm gonna turn away for a second for $400. If you've been paying attention, it was just up here. I'm rewarding people for paying attention. What's the name of the company that I showed their ad, their viral video? What's the name of that company? Okay, I'm gonna not look for a second. I'm gonna give every, how much time we got left on Instagram? Uh, how much battery we have?
I'm gonna give you guys a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, Rick, tell me when to stop. I'm rotating my finger without looking between. You can't look. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. No whammies, no whammies, and stop. Okay, YouTube, which is already going crazy. 4,300 people on it. Okay, it's not the first person to say it. It's the first one I see. That's a very hard concept for people to get. So I need to be better at sales, which is the art of getting people to understand what I'm saying. It's not the first person who wrote it. I can't see four platforms at once. The first one I see when I look at the platform, which I haven't done yet. Okay, Rick, tell me when to stop. And stop. The winner is, holy crap, Shannon Sutton, Dollar Shave Club. Shannon Sutton on YouTube. Reply, you can, you can stop Instagram now. Shannon Sutton, Dollar Shave Club. Reply with your cash app your YouTube, you guys got seven days. Click the link below or go to tylopez.com slash sales for the four month black belt program. We need it, Chanted Sutton, we need your cash app or your PayPal email address. Somebody said, man, uh, Dollar Cave Club, spelled wrong. You deleted my comments? I definitely didn't delete your comments. They just got diluted in here. This is hard to win. Blessed Ballers, <laughs> I never got the $100 in my cash app. Blessed Baller, it's nine o'clock at night. My, my staff isn't around. Can you have a little bit of patience? People are like, I won three seconds ago. <laughs> this is a scam. The money. I refresh my app. <laughs> I refresh my app. It's not instantly there. Yeah. Give me three days to get you the money. Okay. I'll try to get it faster, but believe it or not, my staff is not actually waiting with their cash app. <laughs> Pay it. Boom. Ty, when are you opening your office in India? Peach Sweater Club. India, we're actually, I'm interviewing two people. I think they're in Mumbai right now. I've had an office in India before, and then I didn't have one for the last 10 years, and now I'm, basically I'm hiring people wherever they are talented. That's my better way of doing it. So if they're all talented in Antarctica, I will hire them there. If they're all in Los Angeles, I'll hire them there. Like, I don't really care. Did that person give their cash app yet? Because I might have to pick another person. Shannon, don't lose this money. Shannon Sutton. Shannon Sutton. Going to open his office in Dubai. Eventually. Not yet. That is it. Slowly but surely, I'm trying to make it into 33 countries. But some are easier for us to get. Some we already have staff there like the UK, like London, like Germany, uh, China. Did you get it? Cash app. It can be PayPal or Cash App. PayPal always shuts me down for giving away too much money. Yay for PayPal. If you use their service too much, they shut you down. It's a genius thing. Anybody out there who actually uses our service a lot, you're out. You bought too much of our The genius of PayPal. No matter how long my account's been with PayPal, God knows how many years, they still don't trust. They still don't know. It's like Bank of America. It's like, I used to get my daily, I would get them, they would freeze my credit card for fraud pre prevention, daily. I would spend on Facebook and AdWords, every, I've spent every day for like a decade. It was a year, like 2015, every day they'd shut it off, we get a call. Your account's been limited, because there might be some fraudulent activity. Oh, what's that? Doing Facebook ads, which I called you yesterday about, yesterday about and authorized, and yesterday and the day before, they 
Never think people in business are smart. Smartest people in the world are probably recluses. Just remember that. Smartest people in the world are recluses. Business attracts the people that weren't smart enough to withdraw from society. I guess that's me. But that's why I have a farm, which I can withdraw half the time. Times 18, going straight into your courses. Awesome. Suggest me a book. I'm 15 years old. Tylopens.com slash books. I got a whole bunch of them. All right, we're out. Talk to you guys later. What?